time for our panel. News Talk ZB political editor Jason Walls, Mata host Mihi Forbes, and NBR senior journalist Dita Deboni Tenakoto. Welcome. All right, guys, we got there at last. Jason, you've been up close and covering it. Uh, how do you rate Christopher Luxon's merger and acquisition skills now that we have a deal? Yeah, I, I think that the this is taking too long crowd are going to be silenced for quite a long time now because once you get to this point, nobody remembers how long it takes. They just remember a deal. And looking at what... Christopher Luxon has achieved. It's not one party in coalition and one party in supply and confidence. It's actually three parties in coalition, which in New Zealand's MMP history is quite remarkable. And I think you've got to give him a lot of credit for actually getting Winston Peters and David Seymour around the table, yep. anybody around the table, but especially those three and getting a deal across the line. So I'd rate it quite highly with the one blemish, um, major blemish being the fact that they've had to ditch the foreign buyers tax and yep. it leaves them with a remarkable hole in their flagship policy. Which we will talk about in a moment. Uh, Mihi, overall surprised about the deal or is it what you're expecting? Um, I think, you know, anyone who's working in the margins with vulnerable and um, women and ethnicities and Māori were probably bracing themselves for some change of direction, but I think they burnt the house down. They burnt the house down. OK, and Dita, your first impressions? Um, I agree that it's a big FU to Māori across the okay. country. <laughs> right. uh, it's good. There are some interesting business things that are quite good. OK. Um, but I would call it a boomer manifesto on the social side. A boomer manifesto on the social yep. side. All right. Yep. Let's, let's talk a couple of specifics. Taking turns of being Deputy Prime Minister. It's not a job share, apparently, Jason. No. Well, the Winston, anyway. No, it's not. It's sort of like New Zealand is the child and we've got two divorced parents sharing us for the next three years. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's kept both of them on like side. Two wives. Two wives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said it, not me. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's something that's kept both David Seymour and um, Winston Peters on side. And yeah. I think from within the inside of the negotiations, look, it's perceived to be fair. Mm. They both get mm. a turn on it. And I think David Seymour might come out a little bit better than Winston in terms of the share of it, because given that Winston is also the foreign minister, he's right. going to be out of the country as well. Okay. So when he's out of the country, Seymour assumes the role of okay. deputy prime minister as well. All right. I'm kind of in the camp of, you know, 6% um, for New Zealand first, 8% or something for the ACT party. I mean, for the girl power, I would have loved to see Nicola Willis. It feels yeah. very male heavy. Well, it is. I mean, there's the three amigos up there yeah, you know, uh, right. yesterday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's uh, let's talk particular policy. So Jason's already mentioned the, the foreign uh, buyers tax uh, scuppered by New Zealand First. And Nicola Willis is saying, well, we're going to get it from pushing back the abatement for working for families. Uh, maybe there's a bit of wriggle room and extra savings in public service. She wouldn't stick to that 6.5%. And smokers are going to pay for it. Yeah, what do you think, Dita? Well, can we just go back to the public service thing? Because, I mean, there is this fantasy on the right of politics that there's huge amounts of waste and bad policy, as if the government introduces policy that is bad on purpose and they can come along and sort of slash everyone and create the, a, a good social ecosystem. I mean, in Auckland City, it's happened that Wayne Brown's realised he can't get rid of everything he wanted to because it has long-term ramifications. Right. Well, well this year... Absolute I, nonsense. Okay. But it looks like... Yes, they'll be trying to slash as many people as they can. Then they'll have to be added 10 years down the track. OK, to you think it's circular? Back to the, you know, All right. uh, Mihi, me, me no. what do you think about, you know, uh, Winston look, extracting their foreign buyers tax? Um, no, I'm just going to talk about what I was coming on for. So yeah. every single Kaupapa Māori initiative looks like it's gone. You know, there's things like 7AA, which, is, yep. um, which, which was kind of in response, really, to when OT was, like, uplifting newborn babies with the assistance of the police. It was, um, it's, it's a policy where it devolves resource and power to iwi, to hapu, to groups like that to manage and to start to look after their tamariki who are in yeah. state care. But according to David Seymour, who just told me in the green room, you know, those policies are racist. Anything that is race-based is racist. But we have, you know, we, what we're failing to see is that in health and education and OT and prisons and justice, Māori are so far behind. And Māori aren't just one group in this country. They are one of the founding members of the document of Te Tiriti or Waitangi, which is also under attack. Well, uh, under discussion, according to, to David Seymour. So you just, you just saw then, and let, let, let's talk about this, that he says that a debate about the principle of the Treaty of Waitangi uh, will increase the mana of the treaty. Oh, my God. 
Look, if you want to have a debate about the principles of Te Tiriti or Waitangi, go to the Waitangi Tribunal that's been debating, inquiring and investigating into things that are treaty related for the last 40 years. Where are these modern day politicians? Go and sit in that court. Yeah. It's a court. It's a court that's run, inquired, investigated by our best legal minds in this country, by experts and historians, mm. both Māori and Pākehā. So um, what, do, what, do you, what do you think um, that the effect of this particular part of the coalition documents and agreements with New Zealand First and ACT is going to do in terms of uniting New Zealand? It's going to please Hobson's pledge, which is the whole point It's going point to divide yeah. New it's, Zealand. It's, it's going to, I mean, by all means, have a go. It's so disappointing. No, no, I'm just, well, I'm just asking your opinion because, you know, obviously Christopher Luxon wants a united New Zealand and has talked about that. Well, he didn't want this referendum mm. and now we're going to have um, a select committee process. Okay, it's, but politically, will, uh, Jason, will this referendum actually happen, do you think? No, no, it won't. What's going to happen is National and New Zealand First have committed to supporting it as a first reading in the House, then it's going to go to the Select Committee where various deep people can submit on it. They can say whether they think it's a bad thing, they can say whether they think it's a good thing, and at the end of the day, people will be able to look at that argument and say on balance what they think of it. Mm. Then it's going to be the um, it's going to be up to Christopher Luxon and Winston Peters whether they want to support it. So if it's going to be back to the New Zealand people, they need to convince Winston and Chris to support it through second and third reading. At this stage, they haven't committed to but, doing but that. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. What it is, is it's, no. it's the rights of Indigenous people being debated and decided on by the majority. And as you know, with Māori just being 17% of the population and our good Pākehā allies, it, you know, we, we suffer from the tyranny of the majority. And yes. Don Brash is calling for a citizens-initiated yeah. referendum. And it's, but, okay, it's, it's, that's also part happening, of it's also but, happening by stealth, if you look at the local government um, ideas that they have, which is where Māori wards have been created on local government, that's going to be subject to a referendum. Also, any anyone who's created a Māori ward and put Māori people on a council just by, yeah. you know, in those special... Well, those things are going to be taken. That's going to be subject to a referendum. So right. it's the same thing. It's happening by stealth. OK, I, I will move on to um, some other things. You're talking about some quirky, uh, sort of some interesting business proposals. Yeah. I mean, is, is there one in particular that is...? Well, I think a minister for, um, for space is actually quite a good okay, idea. OK, right. Because um, this sector brings interesting and, um, you know, intelligent young people from all over the world to come and work on it. It's deep tech. We need more encouragement. So we need that, that yeah. yeah. OK. Um, there are mention of a four-year term. Could that possibly become a reality? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'd be surprised if it didn't. I think that there is so much political will to make it a four-year term that it would be shocking if it didn't at this, uh, this stage. Mm. Um, they need to just get on and do it. I mean, I think that there is some argument, do we need a referendum for that? I think most New Zealanders would support it because you look at three-year terms. You have the first year getting your feet under the desk, the yeah. second year starting to get things done, the third year starting to campaign. It really doesn't leave you with a lot of time. And I think five years might be a little bit too long. Three years isn't long enough. But Wouldn't they just be able to pass that in Parliament, or do you think it needs a referendum? So it's, it gets a little bit quirky when it comes to things right. like this. It could be a referendum, or it could be you might need the support of 75% of the House. But the thing is, the thing is, if you look at I mean, everything that Labor has brought in, and now it's going to be so much unwound, <coughs> right? You know, all those yeah. policy... Uh, things that end up on the well, policy the scrapping. Thing, so. right, you're, you're, like, you're shifting all the furniture around, but you've got no furniture to shift around. So we, so we are all the, you know, what is the, the solution to um, the seven AA? What are you, you going to do with those iwi who have now repositioned themselves and worked with Oranga Tamariki and government to have some devolution so of resources? So it's all going to be moved around again. No, but what's the solution? Yeah. Like the Tiaka Fai order is gone. Yeah. Um, so how are you know? Let's set some dates. Let's see when this coalition is going to reduce the life expectancy between Māori and Pākehā. Shall we say 2024? It's you know, you guys chase up. It's an interesting point because Chris Luxon um, has always said he's a KPI man. Mm. He's looking at getting results based on targets. So it'd be interesting to see if they would go into that sort of specific detail on something like that and held themselves politi politically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let, let, All right. So you want to set some dates? Yeah, let's okay. set some dates on some... Uh, good. On, on, good luck with that. NCA level two for Māori boys. All right. You know, give us oh, those just, ones. Overall picture, you saw all the standing up there yesterday. Do you believe that Christopher Luxon's going to be able to hold this together for three years, Dita? Um, I think it, it, he's happy to give way to the more controversial things that perhaps in, in his heart he, he supports but doesn't have the political courage to back. So, yes, I think it actually could work quite well because these people have very extreme views and they're bringing them in and he's finding it... Um, 
quite an easy mix, I think. Right. I mean, he he would. Uh, well, they would obviously argue that there are no extreme views. They've got the mandate. Well, we've um, got people from Hobson's <laughs> pledge. All right. Okay. okay. Union, you know, I mean, um, that's I, extreme. I, I, as someone watching from Auckland, makes me feel like I want to go and be a political journalist in the gallery again. Watching okay. You. Well, we, because you know, look at. Look, I mean, you just have to read the body language of Winston Peters. Yeah. I mean, he was butting in. He was stealing the main guy's show the whole time and, and his body language. And I just think, you know. Okay. Uh, it, David Seymour and uh, Christopher Luxon have, yeah. have always had a really re uh, respectful relationship we, with the media. Not we so um, have run out of time. Obviously, there's so much to talk about, but I'm going to have to leave it there. Dita, Mihi and Jason, thank you so much for your time.